Hi, I'm Piers Corley. I loop with Loopy Pro and a few people have asked me um, how I set it up to do things like the song you just heard and this is the layout that I use. Um, it's kind of slightly customised for the fact that you can see me here, um, but this is how I like to run it. Yeah, so what we have is an initial loop, which is the Beats loop, which is the um, that Boots and Cats. So I put down this simple Boots and Cats loop. Um, and over that, I could just sing if I wanted. Uh, but what I like to do is put down this drone. Do you... I kind of dirty that up with um, a high note and a low note. So uh, what we do is... So that then lets me sing on top. And the, the buttons that I was using to do that, particularly this thing here, is this sort of little eighth dub, which does me a quantized one eighth note that gets overdubbed onto the um, onto the um, onto the drone. So as I'm singing, what I can do is I can snatch stuff out of it. So you, I, what I do is something. Like that. I am a poor wayfaring stranger, journeying through this world of woe. But there's no sickness, toil, nor danger in that bright land to which I go. I'm going there to see my father. I'm going there no more to roam. I am just going over Jordan. Just by clicking on that quarter inch, quarter dub and one eighth dub, that drone is starting to build up this lovely complex harmony that I keep singing over and keep making it more complicated. And that then just works for me. So let's get rid of those just because and reset that sets everything right. So let's have a quick look at how these things are broken down. So uh, I'm gonna disappear from your screen because um, I'm going to be walking you through the different uh, loop settings. So hold on. So first of all, uh, the beats are set up quite straightforwardly. Um, we first of all, I'll just show you the global settings um, before we go any further. The global clip settings are, uh, we've got no, by default, no quantization. Loops are not phase locked. Loops are time stretched. Uh, the reason about phase locking is keeping them in sync with the clock even when uh, they're not playing. And the way in which I work, that's not a thing I want to do because uh, my singing style, quite often I will pause or um, you know stop, uh, interject. And if I do that with uh, a tight grid like that, then that just becomes impossible. And I don't want to sing with a click, which is the other way to work with it. So what I do is this thing runs um, uh, I tend to have loops not phase locked. It doesn't matter so much with this drone system, but with the other style of song which I use, it does. So that that's set and phase lock is off. Uh, I would far rather things time, time stretched if I adjust the tempo, not that I do. I don't want the pitch changing. Um, uh, loop boundary crossfade is a new setting in uh, the most recent version of Loopy, uh, and I've brought it all the way down to eight milliseconds. That keeps my so that keeps that that initial transient when I'm doing a beat uh, doesn't get um, uh, um, have the edge taken off it by by an overdub from the tail of the previous bit. Um, so that's um, you need some kind of, of uh, crossfade so that you don't get a click, but also you want no crossfade so that you want the shortest crossfade as possible. So that if your transients are absolutely bang on the loop boundary, um, you don't lose the transient, which is what um, um, can happen if you're on a 50 millisecond. So then uh, in recording, I have respective t retrospective turned off. I've got all count in, count out turned off by default, length quantization turned off by default, um, uh, audio threshold clearly not happening, um, 
Uh, by default, after recording, we're going to overdub them. Most of the time we don't. Face preservation is turned on. Um, this means that um, if I start recording a second loop when the... Um, and I'm not quantized. If I start recording a second loop when um, the first loop that I'm recording against is, it, is you know, is at three o'clock, uh, then um, that will record a loop's worth of, of stuff but that loop will be marked as starting at three o'clock in the donut rather than starting at uh, 12 o'clock in the donut. So that that, um, which is quite, some people, you know, um, want it so that it moves it to 12 o'clock. That's not phase adjusting. Uh, most of the time, I think, almost everyone will want to leave that phase preservation um, left on. Uh, wait for playback turned off. Auto loop detection is turned off. Don't need it. Um, it does mean sometimes my loops aren't anywhere near as tight as I'd like them to be, but that's life. Um, so that's my default settings. Um, and then uh, the settings for the beats group as well, which you want to see. We have place up quantization is to the loop. The loop is the length of, of, of the individual of the donut itself so when you when you tap stop what will happen is it will go, it will go on to the point where it started it will continue playing to the point where it started and stopped and stop um we again um i don't know why i've got phase lock turned on but there we go it's phase lock is turned on um that keeps this particular loop in sync with the clock because generally when the clock's running with the beats that's how i prefer to do it most of the time i don't use beats though so it's a uh, um Again, time stretch is left on. Time stretch, uh, is there anything different that we've got? Um, record if empty. So when we go into an empty loop, we record. Um, and the recording settings are left to the default. Let's see, did I set up any gestures? No, I didn't. So now the individual settings for, um, for this are that rather than going into overdub when I've laid a beat, uh, my preference with this generally is to go into play mode there are i can override that by using a double finger tap on the loop but most of the time and that will then give me it will go into overdub rather than into uh, play um face preservation's left on uh any i can't remember if i've got any gestures i don't think i have uh no gestures set just the usual just the defaults play stop and uh, so that's how my loops, uh, the, the, the basic Boots and Cats backing loop is configured. Um, the drones are pretty similarly configured. We've got, uh, I think most of the changes are in the colour. So let's have a look at the colour setting. Um, violet group setting. Um, recording settings. Oh, yeah, we're using specific recording settings. We're counting in with no quantization, and we're counting out with a loop quantization by default and um, length quantization is tight uh, we're not recording the tail we're not doing simultaneous recording and after recording in this case we're going into overdub and phase, phase preservation is on um, as it happens for the specific um, settings for this have I done anything yes I've set the count in to be loop so what's going to happen is I'm going to tap it and it's going to come in on on the one of the pre-existing beat uh, but it's always going to be counted out to a loop so you saw that when I was laying down that drone that what happened is the uh, I tapped it sometime before the end of the drone but it it, it, it kept on recording until it reached the reached the the, the 12 o'clock so that's how that's how you want that's how I want that set up. These little buttons here are the other sort of secret source that I use for building that kind of rhythmic drone. Um, and that is done with, um, this is done with gestures. So what I have on that button is what's happening on a press is we record the selected clip. Now we select a clip, it's a generic thing that I've got, so if you if we look at the uh, the view here, let's come back. If we look, the the um, this little white dot identifies the selected clip, and I can select a different clip by swiping down on the clip. That's a global setting I've got for that downward swipe gesture. Select a loop clip. Select a clip. So that's what that's for. So then coming back to um, our eighth dub 
and the quarter dub is exactly the same by the way it just um it, it it's it well i'll show you um so the first thing that happens is we record the selected clip um and that's done by target selected clip action is record uh, if it's got overdub if it's got audio we overdub we're not using the default settings we are not counting in because the default settings are taken from the selected clip not the global default so we are not counting in we are not counting out we are um after recording we just continue playing yeah so that's what happens there the important thing here is this little thing here the the the, the bullet next to the, the 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 thing the next to an action when you've got a list of actions on a gesture is uh how you set quantization delay and other aspects of timing and i'll i'll show you another uh, bit of that in in a bit um so what we've got here is we have um this clip is now timed we turn it to quantization mode and we quantize it to the eighth note so that's an eighth of a loop yeah so that means that when i tap that it waits till the next eight note before it actually triggers the tap and then stop recording is again we just got the target select clip action is stop um we've got no count in no count out um anything of interest and after recording we go to play clearly uh, but the important thing here is this uh, when we when we tap on that we've got options of with last so that that is um i'm never quite sure i think that ignores the the quantization on on that but i've never i've not experimented so i don't know for sure so we're going after the last click we wait for an eighth note and we use instead of quantization we use a delay so what happens is we tap this thing and what will then happen is well you've, you've seen it running uh, what happens is uh, when we tap that button then it starts recording at the next eighth next eighth note and it stops recording an eighth note after that uh, the quarter dub um is exactly the same the only difference we're quantized to an eighth to start but our delay becomes one beat so that um that means that um uh, well clearly you can you can tell what that means can't you really now um this loop is different from the, this loop has its length set to one bar and that means that after i've let after i've put that initial beat down so um now instead of if i don't want to put that drone down come come with me to the old churchyard i so well know the birds need the soft green the swan friend songbird and friend want to reach god friend will trace of the name friend the old churchyard friend i rest in the home friend at one church day friend so because Fred the loop's length was preset, then we know how long an eighth is. So we can just overdub into that empty loop. And sometimes that's um, that's what we what I prefer rather than sort of uh, layering and layering onto an already existing lush um, uh, uh, drone. Um, one of the things that I, I want to be able to do when um, uh, the next version of Loopy comes out is there's going to be adjustments to things like feedback so I'll be able to punch in so I'll be able to set that drone down and then when I punch in with an overdub for an eighth instead of overdubbing onto the thing it could potentially while it's overdubbing set the feedback to zero so I would completely replace that segment of the loop and that means you'd get some of that character of that second um, uh, thing where I didn't have the drone down beforehand and that's that I'm looking forward to being able to do that because it will allow for uh, those drone loops to become a bit more percussive, even more percussive than they are and more uh, sort of give it a bit more of a groove. Um, so that's that's how that works. The um, octave down, I've got a, I've got a thing with an octave. I've got a, a voice pitcher, which I use that, that pulls it down by there's this plug in here. Um, um, so uh, when that when I um, when I do that, it gives me a much lower voice. Um, or it goes down a fifth, 
and watching hmm, both sides of the thing. It sounds really artificial, but when it's being laid on a on a um, on a on a drone like that, it can it just brings a bit of texture in that I quite like. Um, other things here, I've got this dynamic mic here um, and when I want to use that it's, uh, dynamic mic is kind of nicer for using the the, the beatbox stuff um, I have a configuration here that, that um, switches over to the uh, to this mic and you won't hear the tapping on that mic uh, so I would do and that gives me that gives me a, a um, a slightly different character. I've got different EQ set on it as well to, to boost the bass. So that's that's um, that. I'll just show you how we use mic two because it shows another aspect of things that you can configure buttons to do. So if we if we um, click on that, you see what we've got here is um, two groups of actions. So the first time we press it, we are going to mute hardware input one, which is this condenser mic, and we're going to unmute hardware input two, which is the dynamic mic. And then the second time we press it, we um, unmute the condenser mic and mute the dynamic mic. Pretty straightforwardly. And the way in which you get these two groups is um, when you, on the thing that starts the next group, you go to the, um, the, the bullet point and instead of having after last or with last, you choose next trigger. And next trigger is basically uh, the next time you so so it, the next time you tap uh, the button. The first time you tap the button, the first thing happens. The next time you tap the thing, the next thing happens. You can have any number of these, um, uh, and it's it's so you get these kind of so you can have complex toggle behaviors um, such as this. Not particularly complicated, but it it, it just allows for um, um, you know me to switch microphones or whatever it might be um, uh, sadly you can't interrogate the mode of a button and use it for other things but it just that's 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 sort of beside the point um, while I'm here these um, shadow buttons so these are these are my faders yeah for individual groups uh, for the orange and the and the purple and for our master volume but the little uh, grey, the little sort of decoloured pads next to them, um, are set up to be um, uh, in this particular case. The two finger tap is set uh, on the uh, on the. Um, I'll just show you actually. When I two finger tap on drones, it mutes and it takes it down to zero and then back up to ma to maximum. Yeah. So uh, uh, rather than um, uh, have that behavior duplicated what I'm doing is I'm saying send a two finger when I tap this um, uh, grayed out version it's going to send to a double tap which is going to be the mute on mute of the drones loop uh, which the, will then be reflected in the um, so that that drones is the name of the of the fader that we saw and then uh, swipe up and swipe down uh, swipe down is the one that's probably the best so that targets drones again sets its value to zero and ramps it down over four seconds um, and swiping up uh, does the same sets it back to one and ramps it up over half a second then uh, we've got the uh, swipe left and right are just what they do is they reduce swipe left reduces the volume by a tiny fraction over a quarter of a second and swipe right obviously uh, uh, adjusts it by uh, adjust it up and we've got the the adjustment here we've got the option to assign it to toggle it and to nudge it so that's how that works um, and so that that they that's duplicated in its logic across all three of those so now if we if we swipe left if we back into mode if I swipe left it goes down a bit if I swipe right it goes up a bit down a bit if I go down it fades all the way. If I go up, it fades all. It, it comes back up again. So that that gives us quite a bit of control and, and a bit of um, a bit of possibilities for remixing and mixing the and bringing down the volume of the um, um, <clears throat> and bringing down the volume of, of of a group by small amounts. 
um, so we can I can keep tweaking it relative to my um, to my voice and to my lead. Um, I also have here uh, monitor is going to remove my sound from the thing. It takes the mic out, and that does it by um, basically the vocal is sent to a bus A. So when I uh, press monitor. Uh, is uh, the the volume of bus A, if memory serves, is reduced to zero. You can see the volume of bus A is taken down to zero and then reset back up to one. Um, so that's that. I also have um, um, a bit of uh, reverb, a bit of delay, actually a bit of delay, a bit of slapback delay, uh, and a bit of EQ work on my vocal for when I'm actually singing. It doesn't sound great when I'm speaking, but if I remember while I'm singing, it helps separate the sound of what I'm actually singing at as from the um, from the sound of the loop. So hopefully you can you can distinguish and pick out more um, what's me, what's live and what's recorded. So that's that. Um, reset is um, if I hold it for uh, a long press, it reset. It, it clears out all the loops. It resets the timer. It sets the volume to to a particular volume. Uh, and it, it does useful stuff like that. So that is how I use, um, uh, um, that's how I do the drony type um, of songs that I record. So frankly, that's the tiny fraction of what I record and what I use on my streams, but it's the most, um, it's quite, some of you know the, the fancy buttons and stuff like that um but that's how i use it remember i'm i'm using this as a um quite conventional traditional folk singer lots of the of the tutorials you see for things like loopers are based on people making um dance music and much more rhythmic music than, than i tend to work to so their structures are about how you how you use it for beat making um this is how i use it for ballad singing and chorus song singing and the two are, are slightly different which is why my early layout is probably quite different from from other layouts you've seen um this layout is used for things like that uh, rhythmic glitchy drone that i used for wayfaring stranger at the beginning it's also used for um sometimes what you just want is a is a kind of shruti box uh, drone going on in the background while you are then singing on top something like this <laughs> high upon highland and low upon tay Bonnie George Campbell rode out on the day, saddled and bridled and booted rode he. Home came his good horse, but never came he. That sort of thing, you know, where we've got this underlying drone. You'll, you'll see people doing this with a with a with a free read instrument called a shruti box that locks onto one uh, thing that that um, you might find of interest. Uh, it's not a thing I do a lot of, but um, that's a thing that you can do, and that that this layout supports that. Um, if you, anyone wants this in the comments, let me know, and I'll I'll see about putting this up on Dropbox and making it available. Um, but I keep messing with it and you you don't necessarily want all my EQ settings and things like that. So um, <clears throat> I'll probably give you a cut down thing without the EQs and the, and the, and the uh, audio unit set so you can configure that and that, that bussing as, as suits you. If you want it, nag me. So this was going to be one long video explaining how I used the drone layout and how I also did... Um, chorus songs with uh, Loopy Pro but uh, it's already running long and I've just explained the drones so we're going to stop at this point and there will be another tutorial coming up on how I do chorus songs with Loopy Pro and I hope at the same time as the second 
tutorial video comes out, I will have uh, a couple of project files to allow you to um, take the way I do the droney stuff and the chorus stuff uh, and use them for your own projects. They'll be uh, just using no plugins, they'll be using Loopy's built-in uh, effects and um, that should be available uh, sometime probably next week with the chorus songs um, tutorial. If you've enjoyed this tutorial uh, and you find it useful to you, please don't uh, don't forget to like it. Click the like button down there and the subscribe button as well. That would be great because that helps me. The helps helps this video get seen by people who who would like to see it. I stream on YouTube every Friday night, and if you click the notification button uh, down there, the little bell, you will be notified when I start streaming or indeed whenever a video is uploaded. So that would be great. And finally, um, and not least, these videos are supported by my Kofi subscribers, uh, and particularly the um, the um, uh, Merlin Madgower is the, the, the sort of diamond level sponsor of this video. So thank you, Merlin. And um, that's it. See you for the next tutorial. Thanks. Bye. So let's play you out with the, uh, the full version of Poor Wayfaring Stranger. Let's see how we do.
Paul Wayfaring Stranger. Hope you enjoyed that. And I hope uh, you find the, um, the tutorial useful. Thanks very much for stopping by and watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the notify button. I stream on YouTube every Friday night, sometimes with a guest, uh, off always with the looper. So maybe see you there and then. Bye bye.